mediums. It's an interesting subject, but it's one which one must deal with with caution and an open mind as one deals with any other psychical phenomenon. I think it's wrong to go to a medium, as uh, some people do, being absolutely convinced that what the medium is going to say is coming from the other side, the spirit world. Yeah. There are others, of course, who are highly skeptical, who go along and they think it's all rubbish and they're going to prove it's all rubbish. I think neither approach is a good approach for an investigator. The investigator's got to be balanced. Got to hope and mind and interpret what comes through the best way you possibly can. Now I said, mediums, there are two types of mediums, there's the mental and the physical medium. I'd rather talk at this juncture about the mental mediums because I sat with 17 physical mediums and frankly I, I'm just not impressed. It, I know a lot of people are, are absolutely fascinated by sitting in the dark and things being thrown around and tambourines, you know, and trumpets being blown and this, that and the other. And all I can say at this uh, juncture is if that's all I'm going to have to do when I come back when I'm dead, I'd rather not <laughs> come back. Anyway, let's uh, deal with a serious subject. Of yeah, I just uh, interject and ask you for, uh, for our audience, uh, have you actually seen a lot of fraud with physical mediums? Yes, I have. Um, I, but let me say that I've sat with two physical mediums where I couldn't see how they were doing the phenomenon. That doesn't mean to say that I accepted it as genuine. Yes. I couldn't see how it's being done. It was still this, this stuff of voices coming through uh, and saying, Oh, I am dead, but I'm still with you, darling. Don't worry, I'm playing music with Mozart. Now, of course, that kind of thing. You see, when it's accompanied by music, you wonder where the music's coming from. Yeah. But it's, it still could be Ford. But I have seen a lot of that. And uh, I'm not happy. The control conditions when I sat with these meetings would not be allowed. Yeah. Now, in this day and age when we've got uh, video cameras with infrared where we can see in the dark, and uh, that infrared isn't going to do any bodily damage at all, which most meetings will not allow, they say, oh no, you mustn't photograph me. Helen Duncan was killed by being exposed to uh, infrared rays. It's absolute nonsense. She wasn't. And they wouldn't be either. And the infrared that they're getting when they sit, as I have sat with them, in a centrally heated <laughs> seance room is much more than you get from the camera. So I think they're being silly. They're, they're backing mm. off. And it's really, wrong an excuse, it, it's say. all wrong. See, the attitude is wrong. And it makes you wonder why they won't allow you to film them. Mm. Because as I said, look, you say that the scientific world won't take any notice of you. And they're silly. These things are genuine. Here's the, the scientific method to show them and say, well, look, how is it working? I work on talk about mental meetings, but as we're on the physical meetings, we, we'll discuss it a bit further. Because you see, for all we know, it might be that they are practicing a form of psychokinesis, and they don't know they're doing it. And it's their belief structure that is mm -hmm. creating the spirit guides and all that kind of thing. But, um, We've had a recent uh, spate of this in uh, England, uh, in the Skull Group in Norfolk. Uh, one or two members of the society have thought that this is brilliant stuff. One or two other members who've been and seen it didn't think it was so brilliant. And the thing that I was unlucky, I didn't manage to see them, although I'd seen more mediums than most, but it doesn't matter. I've listened to their reports and much of the stuff that they said I've, I've seen before, so I know what the, what, what the background is. But they would not allow anybody to take infrared film. And again, you say, why not? Because they were claiming to be a scientific group with new methods of communication. At the moment when started, when we started, or the group that we're dealing with them started tightening up the control conditions, it stopped. They were told by some higher voice that uh, the uh, methods being used would interfere with the communication, you see? Yeah. Now, I would like to see, with physical mediums, if we're going to pursue that, this kind of argument. If the dead can come from another time, dimension, and space into this world and start throwing books around and ringing bells and moving tables, they are exercising some form of miraculous communication. Now, if they can do that, 
surely they can produce something that is a little bit more intelligent. I mean, just ringing bells is no good. If they've got the physical ability to do that, they should provide some better proof, and they don't. So, political mediums, if somebody gets an opportunity to sit with one, I would certainly encourage them to do so. But to do so with caution, with politeness, uh, with common sense, and say to them, look, we're living in a different age now, you may well have got something that is fascinating for the scientists to see, but can we not use scientific equipment to help you prove your point? I, I mean, I'll give you an example. This is going back to the mental mediums, uh, the physical mediums show. I went down to Wales many years ago to see a chap called Alex Harris, a very famous medium. I went with the spiritualist group. I was lucky because they took me there. I wouldn't get there as an SPR member otherwise. This chap <coughs> was up in a large bedroom, the whole, everybody's seated, about uh, 20 people facing him. In that corner of the room was a black cabinet which he sat in. Table over here, his son in command of everything, and he would walk up and down. He came in, was examined uh, by people to make sure he hadn't got any ectoplasmic lengths of tape and this, that and the other on him. Sat in the, in the black cabinet and came out. And uh, people from Brighton were there. He knew these people had come from Brighton. And he started off by saying, I get the impression that I have some friends here from Brighton. You see? Well, he's not telling anybody that everybody doesn't already know. Yeah, that's the obvious. Uh, now, I was told, yes, that if you came here, I was to give you some messages, you see. Well, he gives them messages and they're all lapping it up. <laughs> There's nothing written down beforehand, you see. And the other trick that this bloke did, I, it annoyed me a lot, but anyway, I kept quiet. He would go back into this black cabinet for about five minutes, or three, four minutes, something like that. And this lot of Brighton all talking and saying, oh yes, now, my, my, my spirit, white mist said, if I came here, it would appear. The next thing that comes out is white mist. Because the medium has heard that white mist has, has been told that it was going to come, and of course he comes out. Yeah. So that's naughty. <laughs> but they want to believe it. And I wasn't at all impressed with this. This is one of the physical mediums I said that I hadn't got much time for. But, to be absolutely fair, something happened in that, me in that meeting which I could not explain. So I've given you what I think is that side, now we'll give you this side. One must give both sides. When we met downstairs, one of the people that had come from Brighton had bought a large bunch of flowers, roses, for his wife, who he said, was going to materialize at this meeting. Okay? We all knew this. When we went upstairs, these roses were put in a jar where the son of the medium was in C. The medium is in the cabinet. All these people are coming out. Then he comes out, or something comes out, much smaller, white. I'm looking at this and thinking, this, this isn't the same size as the medium. And it says to this, it says, I am here. This chap stands up, says, "My wife, my wife!" Dashes over to the to the to the roses, grabs them, goes up to this to this figure, gives it to them, which takes them. He turns the words, "My wife, my wife!" Goes into the cabinet. You see, this chap's waiting outside. The figure comes outside. He grabs this figure round the waist and kissing it passionately. Well, this figure begins to sink through the floor. I mean, I'm, I'm up on my chair like this looking at you see. <laughs> and there's a red light down. Everybody's transfixed by this. And he ends up, as the figure goes down apparently through the floor, his hands go from the waist up to the shoulders and then up to the head. And he's kneeling down on the floor kissing this as it goes through. Mm. Now, I'm not blind and I can see this. And I, how it was done, I don't know. Maybe there was a trapdoor. I don't know. So there's something going on there. Yeah. And if, as I said earlier, if you, we'd had a film of all this, we could have played it backwards and forwards and found out. We weren't allowed to examine that part of the, of the floor afterwards, which I'd like to have done. I'd like to take the carpet back. But it went straight through the floor as far as I can see. And I'm fairly critical. You see? And other people saw the same thing. So how do you explain that?